All right. Happy uh, Thursday, everyone. It's uh, 8 p.m. and our show is on. This is the Fighting News TV. This is our third show this week. We bring you the best in local, national, and international combat sports, boxing, MMA, bare knuckle, uh, dodgeball. Basically, if there's a fight in it, then uh, we're going to report on it. We have a special guest with us today. You all know Steve Rothman, so I'm not going to introduce him again. You know, he's uh, the same guy he was yesterday. Um, but we have uh, with us tonight Logan Holler. She's a professional boxer from uh, she's from South Carolina, but she's living and training down here in South Florida, yeah. uh, right near us. She's eight zero and one right now. She's got some uh, big news that she's going to share with us. Well, it's not breaking news, but it, it's big news. <laughs> but um, first, how you doing tonight, Logan? I'm doing good. Thank you guys yeah, for having doing, me. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We're excited to have you. You know, yeah. um, we met uh, we met a while ago at Delray Boxing, and yeah. uh, you know, we watched some fights together. And uh, we saw you at at the Bad Davis uh, promotion. So yeah, uh, yeah so we're, we're eager to have you on. We know you have a sparkling personality, and you're all set <laughs> to uh, rock and roll this show. Um, I try to. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So so first of all. We, we've been talking this whole week about the way female boxing is taken off. You've had some headlining cards uh, with, with Matchroom and DAZN. You just had Katie Taylor uh, fight uh, Delphine yeah. Pertini in it. And there's just been a, 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 a streak of exciting female fights. What do you think about that, Logan? It's just it's exciting. I feel like I'm coming into it on such a great time. Um, the fights, I watched them this weekend and I watched the, the Brockus fight too. And I'm just excited that we're getting more opportunities. I think that's what we just have to keep pushing for, have to keep fighting for. Um, we just can't let up. But I think ultimately it's got to be, you know, good fights that we want to see. Absolutely. What we've been seeing. And I mean, those Katie Taylor, that fight this past weekend was very entertaining, very exciting. Um, those two girls, you know, went at it. So it was, it was a good day for women's boxing, I think. Absolutely. And Eddie Hearn uh, said that he wishes some of the male fighters would take on some of the qualities of the female fighters in terms of their nonstop aggressiveness, nonstop yeah. action. And what else he pointed out was they actually listen to their corners. Yeah. You know? So without the audience, you can hear the corner saying and and they see the reaction from the female fighters are always they're listening to their corners more. Um, so you have a, a big fan there with with Eddie Hearn. Yeah. Um, but yeah. your background, you know, you come from a, uh, a, a family of athletes. Is that fair to say? Yeah, we were a big sports family growing up. So everybody in my family, you know, played a sport at a high level. And we're typical Southern family. Uh, Sundays are for football and Jesus. So exactly. And yeah. your father, Punky Holler, played linebacker for the Green Bay Packers, and he was actually coached by the great Vince Lombardi. He was, yeah, 60-61, he played for them, and then uh, went to the Steelers, and then he played a little bit of uh, Canada ball. Um, but we're huge Green Bay fans, so people always find it funny when they, they're they like, you're from Columbia, South Carolina, why are you you know, a Green Bay Packers fan? And then I'll tell them, <laughs> and I'll tell them that my dad played, and they're like, oh, so you kind of have to be. So um, what year was he on the Steelers? Uh, it was right after the Packers. He wasn't there long, and then he went to CFL. Um, but ultimately, he's okay. you know we're Green Bay through and through. Did he play in any, any uh, Super Bowls? I think it, when he played, if I may be wrong, it was the it was the World Championship then. Yeah, it wasn't called the Super Bowl yet. So yeah, he he has won. He has a ring from it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it, it, the Super Bowl didn't come around until what 67, 68, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, so and yeah, he played in the early 60s. So and then he played for uh Carolina Gamecocks, which is where I went to school as well. So we're big Gamecock fans too. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah. what sports did you play uh, growing up? I uh played soccer from a young age and then played soccer in high school and travel ball uh and then also volleyball. Volleyball and soccer were my my two big sports. Um but uh, equestrian was my main sport. Uh, so when I decided that that's what I wanted to do and get a scholarship for college for, uh, for D1 school for USD, um, I quit the other ones and just focused on equestrian. What, what about equestrian? Jumping? Uh, showing? I was, a, I was a show jumper. So I was English, um, and I did equitation, show jumping, hunters. 
Um, and then in college, uh, equitation is, and it's kind of a little bit of dressage in college, um, which I know to a lot of people, this makes absolutely no sense because there's so, <laughs> there's so much under the equestrian umbrella. Yeah. Um, but it's a sport that I, I started that when I was four years old. So I did that my whole life too. And it's just a beautiful sport. So yeah, well, happy to be a part know, of it. In, in South Florida, I don't know if you know about Wellington, but. Oh yeah. yeah. It's wow. Some, some nice place that they built. Yeah. All the, um, in the, in the winter, all the northerners come down to Florida and there's a huge horse show series. Um, yeah. you know, I only came down to Jacksonville for a show, but I, I never came down for the, the summer series, but it's, I mean, I'm in another horse country here. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Polo is big. They, they have the polo events in Wellington also. Yeah. yeah. I've also been down to Davy where I train, um, one of my teammates from USC, she was, was on the Western team. Davy's a big Western area. So I went and took uh, some lessons from her, her trainer down in Davies. So that's been cool to kind of switch and do the other style. Yeah. Did you go to any of the rodeos? in? Uh, no, I have, I'm, it's sad to say I've never been to a rodeo and I, I should have, because a lot of the places where I did show jumping, they also had rodeos too. So my goal is to go to a rodeo while I'm here. Yeah, well, Davey nice. has them. Uh, I went to one of them, and they do all this stuff. They do the the barrel, uh, you know, yeah. where they run on the barrels, and uh, they do all of it. So uh, they yeah. have the clowns, the rodeo clowns. Next time you go, you need to let me know so we can go together because I, I need to go. Definitely, to go definitely. To you know what, though? In the, the polo matches, so, you know, you get to wear one of those big hats like everybody yeah. else, you know? That would, <laughs> that, would be, that would be fun. So, yeah, that would be a lot of fun, too. I've so, never been to a polo match, so. Yeah. Right on time is Mike. What's up, there? Mike? What's going on, guys? Mike is always four or five minutes late. I'm sure he. I'm sure you heard the beginning of the show because we we're not going to reintroduce our guest here. But uh, Logan, Mike, Mike, Logan. Hey, Mike, Michael, Mike, how are you? Logan. What's going on? How you doing? Okay, so Good. Logan, how old were you when you got into boxing? And and how and why did you get into boxing? I was. Oh my gosh! I feel like after I turned. 22 23 i can barely remember like what year was what but uh it was right after college uh, right when i graduated so i was 21 i guess 22 um and i was working as a personal trainer uh, at a gym full time and one of my dad's best friends who he played football with in at usc uh, humpy wheeler who uh, is big in nascar in charlotte north carolina he um was kind of like my mentor at the time and i was looking to move to north carolina and he kind of suggested I uh, suggested boxing. And so, you know, I went home and I always wanted to uh, do it for fitness purposes. And I always thought it was such a great workout and already being in the fitness industry. Um, and then also just having an outlet, uh, some, you know, somewhere I could go with anxiety and with stress and just kind of let it out. So I went home and found a trainer there, um, Dominic in Columbia, South Carolina, and took some classes and then just fell in love. And I've, I missed having something to compete for since I graduated college and I wasn't on the team anymore. So being an athlete all my life, it's, it was tough not having that. So having something to work for again was, was nice. And I just kind of went from there. So exactly. Before we go on though, did everyone have a nickname back then? So your dad was punky. This guy was humpy. Who else yeah. did that? Give well, us some yeah. other nicknames of people. Uh, you I think that's about it. He got, I, he, you know what? It's, I feel bad because I asked him the other day for the first time. I was like, where did you get the name Punky? And he told me, and I can't, I can't remember the story, but everybody called him Punky. Um, and I don't know where, I can't remember where Humpy got his from either. But yeah, I guess back in the day, they called <laughs> him each other nicknames. So. Yeah. You, you want to hear a, here's a funny coincidence. My, my best friend growing up uh, when I was younger, his father was also coached by Vince Lombardi in college. Oh, cool. And That's then awesome. he went on, yeah, he went on to play professionally for the for the Giants, the New York Giants. Yeah. And he had a nickname. His nick nickname was Chubby. <laughs> Chubby Fenaroli. And then, yeah. then when he stopped, uh, actually when he retired, he opened a, like a deli, like a little restaurant called Chubby. Yeah. Chubby's oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's so uh, cool. Yeah, so I guess, I don't know, we need some nicknames. Mike, what do you want your nickname to be? Oh, you can call me. Uh, That's good. Late to the party guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not like chubby or humpy. Or, uh, or, we'll work on it. You know? We'll work on it. We'll work on it. Okay, so you started training, Logan, then you walked in, you, you, you were in the gym, and then when did you decide that, hey, not only do I like hitting the, the bags and the, and, the, and the mitts and all that, 
I want to hit another person. And I want that other person to hit me. And yeah. I want to see if I can outlast them and beat them. Tell us well, about that. I think it was, uh, I think I literally the day I trained, the first day I went to, uh, when I went to main event, um, which was the name of the gym at the time, they had a fight that night. And so I dragged my mom to the fight and just, I just would just saw it. And I was like, I want to do that. Um, and also, you know, being an athlete all my life, just doing it for fitness purposes, wasn't going to be enough for me. Um, I'm extremely competitive. My whole family's pretty competitive. Uh, growing up, we were competitive in everything we did. So I just, just doing the classes and just training wasn't going to be enough. So I was like, I at least gotta, I at least gotta do this once and, uh, did one fight and then was like, yeah, this is it. And how many amateur fights did you have? I actually did not have any amateur fights. Um, we tried for a little bit to get matched. Um, I could never really get matched. It's not the amateur is not as big in South Carolina, North Carolina. I think it's, it's growing. Um, I was also a lot bigger at the time. I was probably like, I think I was like 180, uh, bigger girl, you know, coming off of that college weight that I had gained. So <laughs> that was another reason why I got into it to help with some college weight. But, uh, I could never get matched. So my promoter drew Stokes at the time, you know, just said, let's turn pro and let's just take it really slow, you know? And so I've just been kind of have to learn on the job, still learning on the job really. Um, but you know, I, I would have loved to have found boxing at a young age, but it just wasn't around where I grew up and everything. And even for women, it just wasn't big back when, when I was young. So. Exactly. But it is a lot bigger scene down here in South Florida. You, I'm sure that you, you don't have any shortage of training partners or people or other women to spar with. No, it's nice. Um, even if the, even if I'm, you know, moving around with girls that are smaller, it's nice because their speed is there. So I can uh, work on work on speed, work on movement um, and still, you know, sparring with guys. I in South Carolina, I spar with a lot of guys. North Carolina, I spar with guys. Um and here I still, you know, spar with guys here, but I mean, really any work you can learn from. So anybody you work with, whether they're smaller, or bigger, you know, you can work from. Um, but we just had Franchon Cruz come down and I got to spar with her, which was amazing. She's just such an amazing person and, you know, world champion, but just a beautiful soul as well. So it was nice to have her down. And Nisa from the uh, Puerto Rican team came down for a little bit too. So there's, there's been no shortage and, and my manager has been really awesome at, you know, trying to make sure we have sparring partners and keeping me busy. So it's been great. And, and how about sparring and training with this, with, with this female who keeps uh, chiming in on the bottom of our screen here? <laughs> That's Maureen, my girl. Maureen <laughs> she actually, you know, she's, I could consider like her, I mean, an amazing friend, but also mentor. She really helped me through a hard time, you know, my last fight before I moved here. And she's really one of the main reasons I, I moved here. Um, I remember I texted her a, a quick question about nutrition and she immediately called me and like talked to me for hours and, you know, and just felt like, you know, a best friend's sister, like right away. She's, she's been absolutely amazing. And she kind of helped me, get down here and it's been nice to have her and even just talk to her about boxing, but talk to her about other things too that, uh, you know, us women deal with. So I'm extremely blessed, you know, to have another sister in Christ as well. So wait, let's back up one second. You did not know Maureen Shea, but you texted her, uh, you, you hit her up on Instagram, whatever you asked her a question. She didn't know you either. And then you formed a, a friendship and then she helped you train. Did she, yes. she went up there to South Carolina? to? No, uh, I. if I remember correctly, um, I asked my coach because I, I came down to Florida to um, I came down to Florida to get some sparring before one of my fights. And I think my coach talked to uh, somebody and got me in contact with her. And so I think, yeah, if I, if I believe correctly, I think I just texted her and talked to her some, but then asked her about nutrition. Cause that was something I was really struggling with at the time. And she just called me and just would just, you know, a world of information. And then when I came down and then she actually came up for the fight, I didn't end up fighting uh, that fight, but she actually came up to support. And then uh, her trainer had some fighters too. So it was, she's just been amazing. I can't thank her enough for everything she's done. Yeah, Maureen is great, and uh, yeah. anyone, anyone who knows her is lucky, and anyone who knows her respects her immensely, and, uh, you know, especially training with her, you know, uh, 
she, she, you know, whatever. Can't yeah. I can't say enough good things about Mary Jay. Um, oh, yeah. I she's agree. still commenting. You know, maybe she'd want to call in. I don't know. <laughs> uh, she, she got my number from, uh, oh, she got your number from Johnny uh, Farage. Yeah, huh? Johnny. Yes, he does. And what's funny is she actually fought uh the one of the the first gym i was at um the the pro female that was there maureen actually fought her and uh i remember reading about maureen and reading about her story so it's just and like just falling in love with her from the story that i had read and things she had gone through and how she was so open about everything and so it was kind of full circle to actually get to meet her um and you know have such a great relationship with her yeah yeah, yeah we like mo yeah she's awesome Right. We'll we'll have her on it. Maybe we can have both of you on another show sometime <laughs> in the in the future. So speaking of nicknames like uh Chubby and Shorty and uh Punky. You have no, a goal. No, you, have a, a, you have a you have a name. That, that fits right in. You you have a name. The Golden Girl. The Golden Girl, yes. Yes. So how did we come up with that? Nickname. So I um, I started off as the Blonde Bomber when I first started. And uh, <laughs> Pompey, um, who is just a master at um, at marketing, like I said, he, he really built up and he's a, he's a big deal in NASCAR, but just a very smart man and, and uh, all about marketing. And uh, he talked to me about um, being the golden girl and how he got the idea was I forget you. You guys may know, but on I think it was on Sports Illustrated a long time ago. There was a baton twirler. I forget which college she was from, uh, but she had all gold on. Um, and then also being from North Carolina, kind of talking about the whole Ric Flair and the robes and everything like that. And so that's kind of how he thought about it. And uh, so he just presented it to me, and he was like, you know, what do you think about the Golden Girl? And you know, coming out in all gold, coming out in a gold robe, and you know, long story short. Uh, that's kind of how it came to be. So we switched over to the Golden Girl. And they, well, they introduced I, I, you in that fight? They introduced you as the Golden Girl? Um, when yeah. When you wore all gold? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't remember which. I Maybe. I don't know if I was like two fights as the Blonde Bomber. Then the, like the fight that I we changed to the Golden Girl was my first fight in North Carolina. Uh, I had, you know, the gold attire. Wow. The That's Golden cool. Girl is a much better nickname for you. Blonde Bomber sounds like that. That sounds like that's like naming your your dog Princess or Ralph. You know, there's like a million of them. Yeah. Or, or spot, you know. So that's a much better nickname. That's number one. Number two, we don't know any baton twirlers. There's not one of us sitting here. <laughs> well, I can't remember. I mean, or, well, that's where he got the. the that's yeah. where he got it from. It was Sports Illustrated. It was the cover of Sports Illustrated. And it was some baton twirler in college, and she had this gold outfit on, and that kind of sparked a. Yeah, we know Rick Flair. Mind. We know Rick Flair. Are you a wrestling fan? I am a huge wrestling fan. Yes. I grew, up, I grew up with the Attitude Era. Uh, Sting is my favorite. Sting is my ultimate favorite. Okay. Um, but uh, I have a friend, uh, Lady Tappa from North Carolina. She is a big wrestler, and she, um, she's she been on Impact. She's done some stuff from WWE. She's a great friend, too, uh, MMA and boxer as well. Um, so I've gone to a show with her. But, yeah, we grew up big, big wrestling fans, and I still follow it and love it. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So you recently signed with a new manager and a new uh, pr uh, promotion. Tell us yeah. About that. Yeah. So I uh, signed with Peter Kahn with Fight Game Advisors and uh, Luda Bella. Um, so I'm excited about that. I haven't um, was supposed to fight right before uh, the week that, you know, everything shut down. So I was excited to kind of fight, fight for them. But, you know, I know everything happens for a reason and it's been good to kind of take a little more time with Javier, my coach and um, just be patient. But uh, Peter, Peter's been amazing. Um, he's been super helpful and I can't even put into words the team that we have around us, you know, the fighters that we have, how helpful everybody is. And it's just a big family, which has been so nice because, you know, moving away from my family and really just knowing like Maureen, I came down here um, to have a family, um, over at Sweatbox, it's it's been absolutely amazing. So, is this yeah. the girl we're looking at? Yeah, that was it. <laughs> okay, it was on the cover. That, that's Are you able to find that? Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay. nice. Okay, yeah. super. The Golden Girl. Yeah. yeah. So, so Peter Khan, um, that's big. Yeah, he's 
he's he's a character. I love him. He's he's funny. I just saw him at the uh, bare knuckle. Man. Yeah, the bare knuckle press conference. Yeah, he's a he's a very very smart man, and he's I've been trying to learn as much as I can from him business wise too, because um, my major was uh, sport and entertainment marketing and management at USC. So also learning the business side of everything is in, in sports is also big for me. You know, especially when I retire one day and. I want to stay in the industry. So he's right. been just kind of, you know, another mentor, another great person to have. Did your, uh, your, your brothers, you have brothers, sisters. I have uh, two older brothers and then a half sister, um, who is from my dad's previous marriage, um, who just won the Mrs. South Carolina pageant. So wow. she's, a, she's a, she's a pageant girl. She was also the Miss teen South Carolina. So that, and then, so we go to, we go to Vegas in October for the Mrs. USA pageant. So well, that's cool. We get to Vegas for that. Yeah. That's awesome. What, what other accomplished uh, people do you have in your family? We got your father who's a pro football <laughs> player, your sister is Mrs. Uh, South Carolina. What, who else? What yeah, else? Well, uh, both of my brothers, uh, my older brother, Eddie, he uh, was like a star basketball player growing up was amazing at basketball. And then my uh, middle brother, Mo, yeah, uh, he's a real estate agent now in Columbia, and he was big baseball, travel ball, um, football, basketball as well. So big sports family. Um, my mom will get mad at me if I don't say this because she loves to say this. She was uh, very, very smart. Grew up in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and she was the she went to Walford, um, and she was the first the first year they accepted females. My mom was a part of that class, so she loves she likes to talk about her Walford Terriers even when they play USC. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's 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 something that's big. Yeah. You know, to, Mike, to, Mike, tell her about your, your house. That no, no women uh, have done before, you know. Yeah. So, so Mike, yeah. Mike, what? Tell her about your house on a, a football Saturday. Oh, what goes uh, on over uh, there? Yeah. Well, you know, it sounds like uh, your college was a, a rival to uh, to you know my favorite team, which are the Gators. So, uh, as long as you didn't say Clemson, I'm fine. Oh, okay. As as you didn't say Clemson. Gators, I'm fine with. <laughs> Steve's just making fun because I've probably collected, you know, I don't know, 50 or 60 items, Gator items over the last, you know, 20 something years. <laughs> and so on football day, I spread it all over the house. Like the oh, that's awesome. The tank tops and there's banners <laughs> everywhere. I yeah. It, it, is, <laughs> it is a sight to see. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Saturday. Saturday's a big deal. Like if, if the game's at seven, at night and you're not ready by like one or two o'clock with my dad to leave to go tailgating, you're left. Like <laughs> my dad is ready. He, uh, he tailgates uh, at a place with a bunch of his football buddies that he went to school with um, called Cox corner, but he's very serious about his tailgating and he's very serious about getting, uh, getting and, wa and watching the game. Don't bother him. Don't, don't cheer for anybody else. He's, you know, he's very, very <laughs> serious about it. So I completely understand Saturday, Sundays for you. Tailgating is serious business. You can't go. Uh, you can't. You can't half-ass your tailgating. You no. Know, you have to do it, and you, you have to do it right. You have to bring your supplies. Oh yeah. Your your chairs, something to sit on, some coolers, food. Yeah. So Man, when, you, when you were in South Carolina, anything. was was Spurrier the, the head football coach at that point? He was. Yeah, he was funny. He uh, he was there when I was on the equestrian team there, so we kind of interacted some when we had like athletic meetings and stuff like that. But he was a uh, he was a funny, funny coach, but um, when I was there, it was the golden years for USC football with Jadavian Clowney and right. Alshon Jeffrey, and we, um, I mean, we went to the SEC championship. We got, you know, Cam Newton kind of destroyed us, but at least we got to go. So, um, and then we beat Clemson every year I was there, so that was awesome. You know, we always say we can lose every game, but if we beat Clemson, then. We're, we're fine. So, <laughs> yeah. um, it's funny, but, uh, but it, we, I was just excited to have winning seasons. I mean, we had Lou Holtz before that and right. some rough seasons there, but uh, we, I mean, the good thing about Carolina fans is, I mean, we're fans no matter what. So even, you know, with, Will, uh, with Muschamp, um, my dad really likes him and, you know, my dad's really big with the alumni association there and the Letterman's association and I am too. So we try to do what we can for the school. Did, you, did your dad ever help you in the boxing? Like, did you ever put on mitts and stuff? Or yeah, it's uh, he he. I mean, he did it a little bit back in the day with Humpy. I mean, he used to tell me about some of the the fights they would have um, at the Speedway in Charlotte and stuff yeah. like that. Um, and I, but I think my dad also probably had a little more street fights as, as well. <laughs> he was he was a tough one. 
Um, but no, he's, uh, we always joke cause he, he's a lot older now. He's, he's 80 years old and you know, football's done a lot of wear and tear on his body. But when I talk to him about boxing and he'll get up real quick and he'll square up and he'll start to have a <laughs> little boxers bounce, you know, you know, trouble walking, but he'll, he'll get that boxers bounce right in there. So, uh, but he's, he's helped a lot, like more, I would say mental, um, mm-hmm. he's very, very, you know, that, that old school approach, especially to football, you know, it's, right. it, you know, he'll say today football is very different than, you know, when he played back in the day. Um, and just watching football games with him, you can, you know, how he yeah, talks. They have helmets now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like their mentality and, and all this stuff. Um, so he really helps with that. Just, you know, the toughness of boxing and the mentality of boxing, but he, he didn't come, I can't remember, but I, either the, he came finally to the third or fourth fight. Uh, and once he kind of saw that, I, you know, I knew what I was doing. He, he, you know, was a huge fan, but it took him a little bit to kind of come and come and watch. My mom came yeah. to everyone, but then now, now it's a family affair when they can. Does he give you any of that, uh, Vince Lombardi coaching advice? I mean, he just says, if you break something, if, if you cut something, you throw some dirt on it and you keep going, that's it. We just keep going. He, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, he called, uh, it's a joke around, around Columbia. They call him the hammer. And so we got, they call him the hammer and, and that's what everybody calls him. And that's what he'll just tell me. Um, just keep hammering on, keep pushing. But um, yeah, he's, he's, he's been great. So nice. have a good well, it's, great that they're, it's great that they're supportive. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's been good. I think he was nervous when his, his little, his little baby girl wanted to box, but uh, I think he's also excited because he now has a sport that, he can understand that I do, you know, playing soccer, I was defense and he used to hate it because he didn't understand why I wasn't around the ball at all times, which on defense you're not. Uh, equestrian was even I'll admit, you know, watching coming to horse shows and watching horse shows is can be very boring. So I felt really bad for him when he, you know, he came to cheer me on, but for my brothers, he was the kind of dad, you know, walking up and down the stands every football game, you know, letting my brother know what he did wrong, what he's got to work on. So it was tough for my brothers going up. And I, I had it a little easier because he didn't understand what I did. But now he understands. So now now he can give me some pointers and help. Right. But he played a defensive position on, uh, right, in football. Yeah, he, a yeah, he was a liner back, uh, liner back, uh, linebacker, cornerback. And then he told me there was a couple times he'd get really mad at the punter and he'd take the ball and just punt it himself. So... <laughs> Really? Yeah. I can't yeah. see Vince Lombardi standing for that, allowing no, that. No, that, that might have that might have been more at USC. That would that probably yeah. more at USC in, in high school than, than anything. But I mean he's he's got some good stories. As as his daughter, I got to hear some stories, but I don't get to hear them all, which is probably good. So Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So tell us about training uh, at uh Centeno at, at Sweat with Javier Centeno. And, and your team. And your team. There's I, we know there's a great team. Oh, yeah. Um, it's it's been absolutely it's been amazing um when i came down and kind of bounced around looking at different trainers and i met javiel i knew i just had that gut feeling i knew from the beginning that's who i wanted to work with um i'm very type a and very scheduled and very organized and when i, m- I met with him he he was very organized which i love but he his attention to detail is what i really really love um and i'm trying to be a sponge and soak everything up you know i, I still consider myself very green to the sport you know i don't i've been training for a long time but i wouldn't say that you know my experience in the ring is very high um and every question i have he always has an answer he always has you know a drill to teach us there's there's always something his, his attention to detail is just great um and I think mentality wise as a trainer, I think he gets me, um, his, his demeanor works really well for what I need as a female fighter. Um, but just the team, you know, everybody we have there, all the fighters, they're just, everybody's been super, super helpful. And it was, it was really intimidating for me when I first came in, you know, like I said, I, I don't have a lot of experience and coming in with world champions, you know, people like Xander, Amir, all the people that are there, Nika, George, um, Tago, so many fighters that are there that are amazing. It was intimidating for me because I was like, I am, you know, nowhere close to this level, but they never once made me feel like I was anything less. Um, they right. nothing but helpful, you know, nothing but supportive. So it's, it's been a really comforting, you know, amazing family type atmosphere, which is where, you know, kind of what I need, especially being away from my family. Um, and I know boxing is a sport where you're, 
you're by yourself in the ring, but you know, I really believe it takes, it takes a village. It takes a team. And without the team I have, I would not be anywhere close to where I am now. Um, and to give the respect to, to all the trainers I've had before Dominic and uh, coach Carr and um, coach James and coach Dwayne and Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I want to make sure I always give respect to everybody that I've trained with previous because they've all helped me in my journey. Um, so I'm very thankful for them and Drew Stokes, my promoter when I first started. And, um, but yeah, all of them, they just been amazing. Cause especially when you're, you know, you're on the rise, you know, there's days where you don't believe in yourself. There's days where you doubt yourself and it's nice to have those people in your corner that do believe in you. Um, that do, that do help you on the days that you really need help mentally too, not just physically. Um, but yeah, all the, all the fighters, all the professional fighters, all the amateur fighters that we have, um, everybody's been so helpful. So I'm extremely appreciative of, of that team there. Right. So you mentioned everyone you mentioned, you were, were all guys. Do you spar with any of the, uh, or train with any of the girls down there or? Yeah, we have, um, let's see, we have now we have Avril, um, but I know she's, she's injured right now. So we'll be happy to have Avril back. Um, we have Camilla there amateur right now. She's going to be turning pro. We have Christina Cruz with the Puerto Rican team. Um, she's there right now. Uh, like I said, Nisa came down, Franchon came down. Um, and we have fighters that come in and out all the time that come and do training camp. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, as far with the the people we can, we travel to other gyms um, when we can. Um, Allie out of uh, Miami, she comes and, and spars some too. Um, I'm trying to make sure, trying to make sure I name everybody. <laughs> Cause I know, like I said, we have fighters that come in and out. So um, and if I can't get sparring with a female, the guys have been great to jump in there with me too. And, you know, very respectful and, and you know, make me learn, make me pay for my mistakes. Um, but again, respectful. And cause I've definitely been in, I've definitely sparred with some guys before that were not respectful and just kind of enjoyed beating up on, beating up on me. Um, right. And so it's, there's, I, I've been in there with both. So it's nice that everybody that I've been in there, you know, with my team at, at Sweatbox is very respectful. But like I said, they, they make me pay for my mistakes and they make me learn, which is, which is what I need. So it's been right. great. Who would you say gives you the best work out of, out of all your, your training partners? Who gives you the best work in terms of that respect and in terms of, you know, also keeping it challenging? I don't, uh, like of the, of the men or just of everybody? Everybody. I, it, that's hard to say because everybody's so different. Um, you know, everybody's so different. So, you know, sometimes the smaller girls, their speed is just impeccable. So, you know, trying to work with speed and trying, you know, me being a bigger girl and being the weight class, we like to kind of just stand there and bang a little bit. You know, it makes me learn to move, um, work on speed more myself and not just always rely on power. But everybody's everybody brings something different. So yeah. it's like I said, I'm just I'm trying to soak it up as much as I can soak it all in um, and just be able to kind of adjust to different style of fighters. Nice. You know what happened to Matt? He kind of <laughs> did we lose everybody? <laughs> disappeared on me for a minute, but, but that's good. I, I got a few questions for you anyway. So yeah, we'll go through those while we're while we're waiting for everybody to pop back up again. But uh, yeah, you know, first of all, you know, I, I want to congratulate you on your success so far. I mean, Thank you so much. Hard enough just to get one professional win, but for you to get eight like that, that's that's really uh, admirable and. You know, I think uh, you'll continue on. You look like you'll be very successful in your career. Thank you. I and, appreciate uh, that. I, I got to ask you. So I, I know the things that stick out to me in your career uh, more than anything else are those long layoffs. Now, I know you mentioned something about signing with new management. So are those like the management things? I know between 2014 and 2015, when you first went pro, you, you put six fights together pretty quickly. But then you've only had three fights, you know, in the last, say, four, almost five years. So yeah. What's going on there? So um, the promoter I worked with, Drew Stokes, I've, I've fought on most of his cards when I first started, so it was easy to get the fights. Um, and then I fought, uh, you know, I, I never really had a manager until Peter, but then I fought, um, let's see, God, it's even hard to remember back then, but I, I fought with, on uh, Christy Martin's card, and then I was set to fight on, uh, for a little bit, it was hard to get an opponent. Uh, that's why I think I had like a year layoff a while back. And then I was supposed to fight uh, on another Christy Martin card. I was the main event and we were fighting for the NABF title. That's when Maureen came down, um, but ended up 
not successfully cutting my weight and uh, ended up in the hospital with dehydration. So we pulled out of that fight um, and then came down here um, and just knew it was going to be a little bit longer before I fought because I wanted to get to know uh, and work with Javier and make sure our styles work together and um, get used to each other before we just got thrown into a fight. And then, you know, with COVID, um, that pushed the fight back again. So it's been it, it's been hard and it's had, it's made me really have to work on my patience. But again, it's, I try to look, try to find the positive side and it is to just give me more time to get better. And I definitely feel like I have a lot more confidence now than I did even when I first moved here. Right. Um, but it's just been some unlucky things. And uh, I think a lot of females will tell you sometimes it's just hard to, it was hard to find fights for a little bit um, and find opponents. And then once my record kind of got up, then it was like, you know, you got to really make sure it's something that the commission is going to even approve. Um, so I'm definitely eager and ready to get back in there. Cause it's, I think it'll almost end up being almost two, almost, well, I think it's like almost a year and a half now that I haven't fought, um, which is something I really wanted to avoid. Cause I, I hated that. I went that one year without it. So I'm just looking to get back in there. Right. So, um, you know, I've also seen that you fought anywhere between super well to weight and, and light heavyweight. So it's kind of a wide range. But yeah. Where are you most comfortable? Uh, 154 is where I think we're most comfortable. Um, I think we're going to stick to that. Um, we may do a fight before that a little higher, just, you know, coming off COVID, getting my weight back down. Um, but I really feel comfortable. Um, I fought at 154 for one fight. And then the fight that the cut didn't work well um, last fight, I was coming off an injury and just, you know, I, I've always had the body type where like if I don't work out, hundred percent and eat right. I'm going to, I'm going to gain weight. I don't have the metabolism where I can get away with a lot. So after an injury where I couldn't work out, I, um, you know, shot up and just, it was, it was, I take responsibility. It was my fault for trying to cut so much weight for a fight. Um, but, uh, before we had done 154 and then the fight we were going to fight in Atlantic city under Luda Bella, um, we were very comfortable and, you know, going to be able to get to 154, very comfortable. I've been working, um, with perfecting athletes now, they're uh, part of my nutrition team. Paulina, Paulina, Denise, and Michelle, and that group has been another amazing—I want to say family too—but um, amazing part of the team that they make everything so easy, and you don't feel starved, and you're hydrated, and they—they they care about your health, which is what I think is is most important because I think a lot of people in this industry just sometimes, when, no matter where your health is, they want to see you fight. Um, and that's not how perfecting athletes is. They, they really want to make sure you're healthy and they want to make sure you're taken care of, which makes you feel comfortable. Um, so they've been amazing to work with too. So getting to 154, I think is easy, you know, maybe even one day, 147, um, I have areas to lose. So it's not like I'm ripped up and have nothing to lose. So I, I think I could get there, but we, we really like 154. Okay. I mean, seeing that you can move between these weight classes, I know there's a lot of great fighters out there that can do exactly the same that you're doing. The jump yeah. between, uh, you know, it's, I guess they're just trying to find that best fight, but um, there's also a lot of champions out there. They're dominating their individual divisions. So, I mean, who, who would you like to fight? You know, what belts are you aiming for? You know, eh. Whoever, I think, uh, I think Hannah, is it Hannah Rankin who's at 154 right now has got some belts and then Clarissa as well. Um, I know Clarissa said she was doing one more 154 and then going back up and then maybe going MMA. So, you know, I figured one day, um, I'll run into her, but really, really anybody, um, when me and my coach feel the time is right. I'm not, I'm not really one of those people that want to sit here and call people out. I don't, you know, think I'm at that level. I don't think I'm at that, um, that experience level yet. I'm just trying to take it day by day and, and fight by fight and round by round and, you know, whatever Peter and my coach want me to do whenever they feel is comfortable and whatever fight they think is right. Um, you know, I just, I, you know, I trust them. Um, so really whatever they, they think is right. Like I said, I don't, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm ready to call people out or that's not even my personality. Um, I'm just trying to enjoy this and enjoy the process and en enjoy learning and boxing's given me so much in my life. So, you know, whatever comes, comes, whatever God's plan is, is God's plan. Yeah. Well, I, you know, so in your opinion, though, how far out? We'll, we'll assume here that once the whole COVID thing hopefully gets much better very yeah. soon, and you can get right back into action and you can start fighting as frequently as you want to fight. 
How far out do you think it would be for those kinds of championship title fights? I think pretty soon. Um, I think there's not a lot, you know, not a lot of women in our divisions. Um, I feel like there's a lot more comp or a lot more uh, female fighters at the smaller at the smaller weight. So you know, and even like Lou Bella has you know a lot of fighters in my weight class like Raquel Miller. So you know, I'm sure I'll run into someone from my own promotion. And I'm gonna have to, right. um, but. I, I think it's going to be pretty soon. I, I think I've built up my record. Um, you know, I want to get a couple more fights just to get some ring rust off and get in there. And then, you know, I'll start, start pushing for those championship fights. And again, you know, whoever's, you know, whatever weight class we decide to go for and whatever weight class has the champions, then, you know, that's what we're going to go for. I'm going to have to step up and I'm going to have to do it, but I have confidence that I'll get there. Nice. Very nice. So well, Matt's back with us. Let's see there you go. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I just, <laughs> I just walked around. I felt like, uh, you know, my <laughs> rear end was getting tired here. So, so, um, where do you see yourself in five years from now? Oh, man, that's a hard question. This is a hard. It's uh, we when we get past forty minutes in the interview, then we ask a hard question. So, <laughs> yeah, no, that's. I mean, that's tough. I, you know, I'm such a like I said, I'm such a planner. And I'm so type A, but I'm really trying to work on being patient and just trusting God's plan and. You know, wherever he wants me to be in five years is where I'll be. Um, I'd like to say definitely world champion by then. Um, that's definitely a goal, and that's definitely somewhere I want to be. You know, I what I lack in experience, I can tell you, I I make up for in, in hard work and diligence and perseverance. And um, you know, goal wise, I'd love to be world champion. Um, but and, you know, I know I'll get there, and my team has confidence in me. Um, but I don't know. I just <laughs> that's hard whatever wherever god wants me to be whatever god's plan is i you know i gotta accept it and just walk walk by faith so excellent so you just you're living in the moment that's yeah that's yeah that's that's exactly it that's something i've uh been trying to work on a little bit more being more present in the moment um i'm a very future thinking person you know and uh yeah you know being in the moment something i gotta work on too that only helps you in the ring too being in the moment so <laughs> well, there's there's billions of Buddhists in the world that could uh, that could help you out with that, you know, being present and living in the moment. It's because that's what they, you know, that's what yeah. they. Yeah. But um, you know, the what do you do? Do you have any 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 hobbies, interests outside of boxing that you want to share with with your audience as people get to know you here? Um, man, I, I feel like it sounds so lame that like uh, everything is training, but uh, I still try to ride. Um, I love even just being around horses, being out on the farm. I'm a country girl. I'm a Southern girl. Um, so being outside, you know, being around the animals, um, is something I love to do. Um, you know, like I said, I was a personal trainer. I was, you know, certified ACE personal trainer and group fitness instructor and uh, cycle instructor. So being in the fitness industry, I love, you know, when I go home, um, I'll go and teach for the gym that I used to work for. My mom is, you know, the head cycle instructor at the gym that I used to work for. So really just being in the fitness industry and um, spending time with family, you know, watching sports, hanging out with family, family is the most important thing to me. So anytime I can see them or be with them, you know, I try to, so they've been my biggest support system. Awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah, we definitely will. Uh, we'll go out and catch one of those rodeos out in, uh, in, yes. in That'd be so much fun. But, um, I, I know they do them over the. I don't know if they're doing them this summer because of the whole COVID thing. But uh, yeah. the one time that I did go was over the summer. My son also went, uh, you know, with his camp in the summer. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what the rodeo season is. I, it's, but, uh, I think it's all year round. Uh, yeah. A lot of my friends, um, one of my best friends, Audrey Jules, she's in Texas and she's a she's a trainer. Um, and marrying a trainer. And I think that they're all year round. She does rainers. I don't know if you like know the ones where like they run and stop and spin. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what she does. And so I, I, I think they're all year round, just like for show jumping for us, it was all year round. I mean, I was showing like two times a month um, on the weekends and sometimes horse shows were a week long. So we don't really, we don't really get a break. No, no. Um, all right. So are there any female fighters that you, uh, that you admire now, the professionals that you look up to that, uh, or whose style you, you admire? Well, I mean, we got to talk about our girl Maureen, right? 
We can talk about Maureen. I don't know yeah. if she's still listening. If she's still listening, maybe she'll she'll give a comment. Yeah, she yeah, uh, let's talk about Maureen style. Yeah, she's just just a spitfire. I mean, she's yeah. she's she's great. So uh, there she is. <laughs> it was, um, and I'll tell this story. She she knows she knows. Uh, I, I've said this story before. Someone. Um, one of the announcers was saying, you know, what's with these women? They're always head hunting. They never go to the body. And I'm thinking to myself, Maureen Shea goes to the body. Where is she? You know? Yeah. And, I've, and uh, you, had, you know, yeah. you had body work from uh, Katie Taylor and, uh, and Pursun in, in their fight. Yeah. I can tell you I've, I've sparred Maureen and she's definitely hit me to the body. She's, she's good at going to the body, but she's, I mean, she's so experienced and she's, She's so great and she's so helpful in, in just lending her knowledge. Um, but she's someone I really look up to. And, and like I said, I'm really thankful for and blessed. Um, yeah. I uh, really, I mean, there's, I don't have a favorite, a favorite, favorite fighter. Cause like I said, I try to take something from everybody. Um, but I, I did like Ann Wolf. Uh, I liked, I loved her mentality and her, her grind. I know she had a hard life that kind of, you know, formed her, her mentality when it came to boxing. Um, yeah, she's but, one of the greats. Yeah, but to me, the the mind is so is so incredible. So I always, you know, like to. I love watching documentaries, and I love seeing you know fighter stories and kind of seeing what makes up their mind, and you know, seeing what what got them to where they are. And so anything like mentality wise, working with that, um, you know, I really really admire. So Ann Wolf was someone who's really cool, but Marine too. She's she's just you know. You're not gonna you're not gonna outwork or you know break her down mentally ever. So people like that, I think, is someone over the physical side of boxing, someone who mentally you just can't break down is someone I really admire. Yeah, and I think she's getting about. she's getting better. She's getting better all the time. <laughs> you know, I've seen some of her early fights. I never told her this and you know, but I've seen some of her early fights. I think she's better now than than she was when she was younger. Yeah. Well, I think that comes with I mean I feel like women, we prime a little bit later, especially in the sport. I mean, especially because we didn't, we didn't take all the, you know, the damage doing it all of our lives, you know, but I, I think we're smarter, you know, as, as we get older and, and we have that experience and, you know, there's a lot of things that we worry about when we're younger that we don't need to. So I think she's just, she's just super, super smart and she's seen it all. She's been through it, you know, and she's, she's had, you know, stuff in her life that's made her who she is and it's made her, you know, I'm such a great person. So, you know, it's, I'm excited to see her fight again, which I finally yeah. got to see her fight right before. I mean, I don't want to say right before COVID, but it was, you know, before everything went down and it was so cool to see her fight, go and do a little salsa when she got in the ring. Yeah. Well, that was, uh, that was January or mid, mid January. Yeah. It feels, I don't even know. I don't even know what day or month it is half the time. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess mid January. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good show. She put on a good show then. And uh, I know, you know, I've also always spoken to people yeah. that's barred with her and, you know, they, she's, she's tough for sure. Yeah. And she's, um, she's always willing to help, which I think, you know, as women we need right now, you know, people always say, you know, who's the face of women's boxing. And I'm like, there can't be a face of women's boxing. There has to be more than one. There has to be, you go and ask a handful of people who's the face of men's boxing and you're going to get, you know, 10 different people and they're not going to say one person. Someone will say Canelo, someone will say Spence, someone will say uh, Bud, you know, everybody's going to say something different. So I think that's where sometimes we go wrong in women's boxing is someone's looking for a face of women's boxing. But I'm like, what happens when that face is retired? You know, it leaves yeah. sport with nothing. So, you know, it's, we got to have more, more people and, you know, and definitely know we need more opportunities, which we're, which we're getting, uh, but still more, more to come and I think we're proving ourselves with so it's been great to be a, to see it and then hopefully you know be a part of it soon so that was a great event you're talking about in January yeah that was that was a good time bad, yeah bad uh Davis uh yeah and we had event. uh we had David Estrada I, I forgot David Estrada has been absolutely amazing he was uh on the fight card um that trains with us and he he comes back and forth but he uh he's also been someone i've sparred with him too and he's just he, i mean he's a bull so it's been he's, is, he, is he still training is he still does he still want to be active or what i think so i think just with everything going down it's just put a halt on everybody so um I'm ho i hope to see him come back you know to florida soon because he's always been someone too that is just lended all the knowledge he could to me 
Um, and he's just, he's, he's been great too. So hopefully I, I hope so. I was excited to see him fight too. Yeah. Um, well, your, your, your teammate Xander is fighting in uh, what, two weeks? Yeah. Xander and Nika are both fighting, uh, in Kissimmee, uh, next week. Oh, they're both um, on that same card. Yeah. Nika's on that card too. Yeah. Um, who Nika? Someone like I, he's he's I've gotten in the ring and sparred with him too, and he's a, a heavy hitter, and he's like helped me tremendously as well. So I'm excited for them to fight. Um, hopefully, I, I know it's going to be on Telemundo. I don't know if they'll be on Telemundo. I hope because I hate not being able to watch them. Uh, luckily, we've been able to watch them when they've been on the top rank cards. So that's been one thing that's tough, and you know, no fans. But yep, they're both headed there next week. That's uh, that's um, MNR boxing. I think so. I'm not sure. I just know it's in Kissimmee. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that'll that'll be that'll be good. I get nervous. I get nervous when my teammates fight because I feel like you can't you can't do anything. You can only watch. I get less nervous when I fight, you know, because I have more control. So I'll be excited to see them fight. And then it's Xander's birthday. I think that night too. So yeah, and you just had a birthday recently, right? I did. Yeah, my my last year in my 20s turned 29. So when was your birthday? What what day? Last Sunday, the sixteenth. The sixteenth. Yeah. 16th. Happy birthday! Well, happy Thank birthday! You. To you. I appreciate it. Um, you guys want to sing? You want to sing Happy Birthday? To no. Lily? Come on, count to three. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday! Come on, Mike. Two. You. You've sung this song a hundred times. Happy birthday! Oh, these guys forgot the words. Yeah. No, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Woo. Thank you so much. Okay, so this was your 29th birthday. Roaring, and, uh, roaring 20s, one more year. Yep. Headed so every birthday from now on is also going to be your 29th birthday. This is it. So yeah, next but- year, <laughs> no, next year, you know, if you want to tell people that you're 30, yeah. whatever. You know, I don't, you, but see, I don't know if I'm one of those people, though. Like, I don't. Age doesn't really bother me. I don't. I'm not. I'm not worried about 30. To be honest, like I said, I feel like I'm a whole lot of. Uh, smarter than I was, you know, my early twenties. So I'm thankful for the knowledge that I have. So I don't know. I, how I, old I, I am. I'm Ask not worried about are. 30. How, am I allowed to? How old are you? 29. There you go. <laughs> That's perfect. Steve, wait, wait, how wait. old are you? Can we turn 30 <laughs> together next year? Yeah, you know, there you go. <laughs> we'll have a joint birthday in Vegas. Uh, I'm turning uh, Vegas. 29 talking. next week, Matt. Yeah, Steve is turning 29 next week. Well, why, don't, why don't we all just – the plan was for me, when I turned 30, I wanted to go to Vegas. So why don't we just all go to Vegas for our 30th? Fuck yeah. Let's go. go. Vegas. 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 Road trip. Yeah, it'll be fun. I'm, I'm Mike, there. how old are you turning? Well, you know, if you guys got 10 years on me, that means I'm older than right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not worried about. Uh, I'm not worried about thirty yet. My brother, who just turned thirty-five, he was like, thirty didn't hit me, but he was like, for some reason, thirty-five hit me. I was like, why thirty-five? But no, I'm. Uh, like I said, I, I. I wish I knew the things I knew now when I was younger. It would have made some smarter, some better decisions with some things. So yeah, things would have made more sense. That's life. So. Well, just before we continue, we forgot to give a shout out to our sponsor. Tonight's show is brought to you by Fusion CBD products. Uh, Check them out. Not all CBD products are treated the same. Uh, Fusion is one of the best out there. It's the best out there, in fact. And uh, if you use our code, The Fighting News, you get a 15% discount. So for all your recovery, training, pain needs, uh, look at look to Fusion CBD. Follow them on Instagram. Tonight's show is also brought to you by the number nine and the letter X. Yes, and you know what's funny, Matt, is um, if you go on not funny, but if you go on to uh, FusionCBDProducts.com, you can learn all about CBD, what it does for you, uh, what the CBD coffee does for you. Um, a lot of athletes like to uh, wind down after a training with CBD products. Um, I know they have the uh, CBD uh, massaging uh, oils that uh, Oil after yeah, it treats yes, uh, yes. The and there's also there's also stuff about um, inflammation sex uh, in the bedroom with CBD products. Believe it or not, so it helps yep. in that the bedroom. Be 
I might have, you might have been reading your Viagra, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I was reading it on FusionCBDProducts.com. Um, <laughs> where were we? Where were we? Do you have any sponsors? Anyone you want to give a shout out to, Logan? Um, no, like I said, I mean, just my team, you know, working with Perfecting Athletes, Lou, and Fight Game Advisors. Um, you know, that's about it. Just shout out to my team for being so amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll give a shout out to Lou DiBella. Lou DiBella, I, I called, he doesn't know me. I don't know him, but I called him one time <laughs> for an article that I was researching or whatever. And again, he didn't know me. He, he called me right back, you know, and uh, I had a whole long conversation with him. He was happy to help out, you know, so. I'll yeah. give a shout out to Lou DiBella. No, he's, he's been great. I got to meet him when I went to Atlantic City and, that is one thing that I think would be that I talked to him about that would be cool is one of my dreams I would like to do is to fight back in my hometown or maybe fight back, you know, at the Colonial Life Center at USC. So, you know, at the end of the day, hopefully maybe have a championship fight back at back in Columbia, um, whether it be Williams Bryce, whether it be Colonial, that would be that would be a real cool thing to, to see the next five years. So I got a question for uh, for Logan. So, Logan, you're at a dinner table. And you can invite five guests, living or dead. Ooh. Who would you invite? God, these hard questions. I was <laughs> like, man, oh my gosh. And you said living or dead? Living or dead, yes. Man, that's tough. I, I, I don't know. want dead people at your table, but you know, go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is this is uh, this they, is. Well, they would be alive just for that time, but oh right. Not yeah. like Terry, Terry alive. They'd really be alive, you know. Oh, um. So you know, I'm I'm a sports fan, also. You know, I, I'd say, okay, hey, Michael, I'd say, come on over for dinner. You know, you know, and we're yeah. all athletes, basically. Yeah, I would. I was gonna say, Michael would definitely be one. I grew up a big Michael fan. Uh, even though we were Carolina fans, I also grew up a big Tar Heel fan. You know, we were big into basketball, Tar Heel there. Um, I don't know. There's just. There's so many. Um, I think female athlete wise, uh, I grew up a big Mia Hamm fan. Um, so Mia Hamm or Serena Williams were like my two big female athletes that I, I really loved and how they had the impact on the sport. So I love to talk to them. Um, God, I'm trying to think. I really one of my favorite motivational speakers is Les Brown. So I would love to to sit down and talk with him. Um, Let's see. Let's see who else. I mean, of course, Beyonce. I think Beyonce would be great, right? No, that's, like, a, that's a cool like, party. Like every, every the party just got else. started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beyonce's on my list also. I feel like every female has to say Beyonce, right? Um, but Beyonce, um, man, I'm gonna, I, the problem is I'm going to think about everybody who I'd want to sit with as soon as this is over with. I feel like that's uh, all I can you got. You have one more. Um, um Man, does Jesus yeah. come? <laughs> yeah, he, he, he could come. Um, God, I don't know. He could come. That is, that's a tough. That's a tough one. Um, <laughs> that's that's the fifth. That's fine. That's fine. God, that's, that's fine. A, I was trying to get someone from like all different. That's, an, inter that's an interesting dinner party right there. Yeah. My mom, you know what? I, I'll I'll do one for my mom. She would her favorite is a uh, Dwayne Johnson. So if I could have him at a table, she'd probably kick me out of the table so she could sit there. Ah. So the Rock is her favorite. So very good, very good. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm gonna have to start having that ready for interviews now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's tough. No, well, that's, that's good though. That's good. Uh, you know, this is good practice for you, Logan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, I was telling you, man. I was like, it's, it's. I've done like plenty of interviews, but it's been such a long time that I'm like, I'm gonna be rusty at these. I gotta have some questions, some answers ready for these questions. Well, that's why we're asking you unexpected ones. ones I know, you right? Think about, you, know? you know, I should, I should throw Vince Lombardi in there. That's probably who I should throw in there. Yeah, that definitely. Would be, that would be. Let's just let's make it a party. We'll make it a, a more than five. It'll be fine. It's a big go. party, big party, yeah. and 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 and. Uh, Les and, and Vince are gonna go at, go at each other and say, get, motivate each other. Yeah, yeah, that'd, that'd be, cool. be that would be great. All right. Well, do you have any questions for us, Logan? No, 
I don't, I'm, I don't I'm just care. kidding. That's what he's saying. That's not going to be an interviewer. <laughs> how, how, how are all of y'all doing and all your families doing with everything that's going on? That's a good question. We're, we're, we're uh, a little bit on the board side, but, you know, it's, yeah. we're, we're all surviving. Yeah. We're all making just, the best of it. I was just went off uh, off air uh, just recently because my daughter just got her schedule and when the kids do go back to school, she isn't in classes with her friends, so she's all upset. So. Oh yeah, I know that's stuff know. for the kids and the yeah. teachers too, Matt. I'm thinking about you too. Thank you, thank you. Well, I'll be here with this, you know. Except instead of four people, there'll be twenty. You know, hopefully there'll probably yeah. be more, seven or eight, but. Um, yeah, you know, it is what it is. You got to make the best yeah. of it. Yeah, you're hundred percent correct. You know, find the positivity, you know, make the best of it. So, right. But next year, birthday in Vegas, birthday Vegas. Right. I got, Radio. I got my, uh, I got my calendar, my little book right here. That's, uh, that's it. It's already on the When's calendar. Your, when is, when is your birthday? Mine's in January. So are we going to do January or are we going to do August? Um, oh, January, January for sure. <laughs> August, August, in, in August is it's too hot, you know. We might, as, yeah, oh, okay, definitely January. Then, I've never know, been to Vegas, so I'll, I'll take oh, your boy. word on it. Yeah, but you know, you want to go to Vegas and party, but you want to go to the mountains surrounding there, and you know, Red Rocks and uh, yeah, you know, all those places, that kind of stuff. That would be fun. I, I want to see the shows. I'm not. I am not a gambler. I'm not. That will not be my forte. So I'll stay away from that. <laughs> Michael teach you how to gamble. Right. <laughs> That's the Mike's a professional be... gambler, professional handicapper, professional professional. Oh, I'd be. I'd be terrible. My brothers are good at it. Though they gamble, and my brothers, when you know they go to Vegas, he's my brother's great at it. But I, I lose all my money, so I don't even want to get started on it. <laughs> So one, well, this wasn't the last time we we're at the casino. This might have been two or three times before that. I won. I think it was uh, it was like two hundred and twenty dollars on one. On you know, I put twenty dollars in on roulette. I I picked everything the same numbers. I always pick black and twenty nine, and uh, and both hit. So I won like two hundred twenty dollars. Said, all right, guys, I'm out of here. It's like three o'clock in the morning. These guys call me up. As I'm pulling in, so now it's almost four in the morning, saying that Mike won a jackpot of how much was it, Mike? <laughs> oh yeah, that one back then. Oh, Hundred bucks. I no, it was, I think it was sixteen grand. Sixteen, 16 grand. Yeah. Dang. See, it was, it was it was almost double that, Matt. But he didn't tell his wife sixteen. He didn't tell her the thirty-two. He told her the sixteen. Oh, yeah, she better not be listening because. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like thinking I'm rich, you know, won two hundred twenty dollars. Yeah. I, this clown comes out with sixteen thousand. I mean that. In a I, I was there. I saw it. I was going crazy. He was just like, "Oh, I won!" I was just like, "Yeah, you fucking won!" I was going nuts on this yeah. guy. He was like, like wasn't just, even happy. Just save some of it, you know. So we'll go out to to dinner in the casino the next time, and uh, that was yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah, we did. We had a good meal the next time out, right? <laughs> good times. Good times. We did. We did. We did. We did. All yeah. right, that's our show today. Thank you so much, Logan, for coming on. Thank you guys yeah. for having me. I appreciate it. It's been fun. Yeah, we, we do appreciate you coming on, Logan, and we'll definitely do it again soon. We look forward to seeing you in action, and uh, either before or right after or both your next fight, then you can come on. Or if something you know, exciting is happening in your life and you just want to you know, shoot, shoot the, the, the bull with us, yeah. <laughs> we'll, have right. do, we'll have to do a show at the rodeo or something. Yeah, we'll go live from the rodeo. That's <laughs> Change it up a little bit. Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Bye, okay. Logan. Thank you. Have a good night. Night. Have a good you night. too. Good luck. Thanks. Bye-bye. So that's our show, guys. The Fighting News TV, live on Facebook, live on YouTube. Uh, we got a professional female boxer. Uh, looking for a fight, you know? Um, yeah, and she'll get one. She's got a good management oh, yeah. team. And she's, oh, yeah. She's, uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we wish her We wish her the best of luck. Very nice girl. All right, guys. Matt, we got anything coming up? Well, you're going to uh, Titan tomorrow night. Yes! 
sir. So tomorrow night, tune in to the Fighting News on Instagram. We're going to be giving live results. We're going to be interviewing the fighters. We're going to be doing live of live results. So check us out tomorrow on Instagram. And uh, I might even go live on Instagram, show you a little bit of what uh, UFC Fight Pass has on tomorrow night. Uh, so tune in to Titan FC tomorrow night. It's going to be a good one. Definitely. All right, guys. Definitely. Deuces. All right. Good night. Night. Stay safe.